Point number 20 says, Every eye saw him, including they also which pierced him. <laughs> Every eye saw him, including they who also pierced him. Or they also which pierced him. Our text for number 20, point number 20 are... Revelation 1, 7, Mark 4, 11 to 12, Luke 17, 20 to 21, John 3, 3 to 5, John 14, 23, Romans 15, 20 to 21, Daniel 12, 9 and 10. All right. So we want to go to our Bible and we go to our main verse. Our main verse, which is Revelation 1, 7. Reading from the English Standard Version. It says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. And remember, Revelation 1, 7, as a matter of fact, all of Revelation is written in the context of John's time. So, behold, he is coming with the clouds in John's time. And every eye in John's time will see him, even those who in John's time had pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth in John's time will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. That's the context that the vision of Revelation is given in. It was given to happen, to come to pass in John's time. According to Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. So every, gen every eye in that generation saw Christ <laughs> as a matter of fact it tells you clearly that those who saw him or who would see him would be those who passed him <laughs> so automatically the all or the every there is not every single person on the entire planet it was every eye of those who passed him. So it narrows it down to the Jews. Because the Jews, even though the Romans were the actual ones who passed Christ, the Romans did so under the instigation of the Jews. So, the every eye there was every eye of Israel. <laughs> we have to understand that the book of the vision of Revelation was focused on Jerusalem. The judgments in the book of Revelation were being poured out on Jerusalem. The temple that was given over to be trodden underfoot for three and a half years was located in Jerusalem. The city which was called the great harlot which killed the prophets and the apostles and the blood of the martyrs were found in her was Jerusalem. <laughs> right? So the coming of Christ was to Jerusalem to judge the old covenant people according to their works right so even those who passed him that was the Jews and it says and all the tribes of the earth well who are the tribes of the earth <laughs> huh? who passed him it was Israel Israel was the tribes of the earth who passed Christ and who would see him coming with the clouds. Now remember, we, 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 we discovered in our previous point, point number 19, that the coming with the clouds is parable for coming in judgment. <laughs> right? Coming in judgment to reward or to punish. Right? And so... Even when it says every eye shall see, does not necessarily mean or does not only mean 
in the sense of seeing a physical something. As a matter of fact, it does not mean, in this case, it certainly does not mean a bodily manifestation of Jesus. Because when we had the cloud comings of the Lord, of Yahweh, God, in Isaiah, and in Jeremiah, and in Exodus, and in Chronicles, those cloud comings, not a body was seen. Not a, there was no form of the Lord seen. They saw the glory, they saw the bright cloud, they saw the bright light. They did not see any bodily form. Right? So the seeing there is not of any form. The seeing is of the manifestations. The results, for example, what would the, the tribes of the land see that would make them mourn? Well, they would see, number one, they would see their brethren being slaughtered by one another. Civil war. They would then see the Romans coming up and slaughtering their brethren. They would see the Romans burning down their, 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 their city. They see the Romans destroying their temple. Right? All of that was part of the coming, the cloud coming of Christ because it was a judgment that Christ was executing upon Jerusalem. <laughs> so they saw the judgment. Right? That's what they saw. And even when Christ used the word see with reference to the kingdom of heaven, he most times was not referring to the simple act of just looking at something and observing something. Frequently, even as we do today, he was using see with the deeper meaning of the word. For example, let's look at Mark chapter 4 verse 11. Okay? Mark chapter 4 verse 11. Look what Jesus says. To you, speaking to his disciples, he says, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. And But for those outside, meaning outside of the kingdom, everything is in parables. Okay? So Christ <clears throat> intended to give the disciples and his followers and his believers the, 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 the reality of, the reality of the kingdom of heaven. Teach them the reality of the kingdom of heaven. But to those who are outside of the kingdom of heaven, everything was perceived as parables. They, they, only, they only heard parables. But if the parable is not explained, then the kingdom would not be understood. <laughs> right? And so it says, those who are outside the kingdom, hearing the parables, they may indeed see. Right? That's the natural sight. But they would not perceive. <laughs> okay? Indeed, they may hear. They will hear the parable. But they would not understand. Right? So... Christ is Christ is now is, is using is using here. Let's apply this here to when Christ said he would come into his kingdom on the cloud or with the cloud or in the cloud, right? That's a parable he's he, he's using there. Right? Now, today, just to give you a, a very um contemporary example, when a normal person reads the Bible and they read Christ is coming on a cloud. <laughs> That's they're reading the parable. And because they the parable was not explained to them, they are seeing, yes, but they are not perceiving. They are hearing, but they are not understanding. So therefore, they will look for, they will keep looking up in the sky for a man to come in a cloud 
or on a cloud or with clouds. They will be looking for the parable. But once the parable is explained, they will understand, oh, that meant Christ coming in judgment. And not in judgment in the 21st century, but in judgment to those who passed him. <laughs> right? So, so we have the understand we have the, the, the sense of Christ saying, okay, there will some there would be some people in Revelation 1 7, they would see, they would see the temple being destroyed. They would see Jerusalem being destroyed. They would see their fellow Jews and Israelites being destroyed. But they would not perceive or pay attention or realize why and what is really happening. They would not perceive that this is the judgment of Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Who is now reign? Who was then begun to reign in the kingdom of heaven? And reign over Israel. Okay? They will hear all the commotion of that war and of that destruction, but they wouldn't understand <laughs> what was really happening. Right? But the people of God, the disciples of Christ, the apostles, who, who through revelation and teaching of the Holy Spirit, they saw what was happening and they realized that this is the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Christ executing judgment, which he, which he had talked about in Matthew 23. They heard the commotion and they understood what was happening. Right? So even at the coming of Christ, which Revelation 1-7 talks about, it was showing that in John's time, all would see... <laughs> But only some would perceive and understand. Those who perceived and understand, those were the ones who would receive the glory cloud and be filled. <laughs> but those who saw and did not perceive, those who heard but did not understand, they would be destroyed because they did not have the Spirit of God. Okay? Only those who had read the revelation, because you remember the revelation was given now, to reveal <laughs> to the churches what was about to happen. So only those who had read the revelation would be able to see and perceive, hear and understand, because they had, been, they had received the teachings of Christ. Okay? So the parables of the kingdom, which are the teachings of Christ, were, were to be explained using the principles of interpretation that Christ and the apostles used. What is the problem that we have today is that many of us don't realize, number one, that Christ was teaching in parables. We take everything or most things that Christ said, especially the, um, when coming to referring to his coming and the book of Revelation, we take those things literally. <laughs> so we are looking for Christ to ride out of the sky on a white horse, <laughs> followed by angels on white horses. We are looking for Christ to come out of heaven and his foot touch on on uh, 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 Mount Zion or Mount Olivet and flatten it out. <laughs> you know? We are looking for Christ to, to come uh, uh, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a sword coming out of his mouth. <laughs> we are looking, we are taking the parable as the literal instead of understanding that the parable is, should be explained to a spiritual reality. Okay? So when those parables of Christ are explained, then the truth is seen. Seen with understanding. Look at Luke chapter 17 verse 20. Right? 
Luke chapter 20, verse 17, and you will see the problem with the modern church here. Verse 20, being asked, Christ being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he, Christ, answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed. This is the whole problem with the modern church today as with respect to the coming of Christ. They are looking for a kingdom which can be observed. And Christ clearly said, this kingdom is not one which can be observed. <laughs> Yet they are looking for a kingdom to come out of the sky. I always forget the measurement of the kingdom. I think it's 12,000 furlongs or something like that. 12,000 furlongs wide, 12,000 furlongs high and deep and something like that. Whether it's furlongs or cubits or something. I can't remember the unit. But they're looking for this massive cube, <laughs> which is miles wide and miles high and miles deep to come out of the sky and land on the earth. <laughs> but Christ says the kingdom is not observable. Verse 21, he says, Now will they say, look, here it is. But this is exactly what the modern church is, is saying. Well, they would say, well, how you are saying that the kingdom of heaven is, is here and we never see anything come out of the sky like Christ said. But Christ said, this is not what the, his people would be saying. <laughs> he says, nor will they say, look, here it is, or therefore, behold, the kingdom of God would be in the midst of you. It's a spiritual reality. It's a corporate and an internal kingdom. So the, the corporate body of Christ is the kingdom. but And yet you are also the kingdom because God dwells in you. Right? This is the kingdom that Christ spoke so clearly about. But everybody is like, no, we want to see. The literal thing come out of the sky. We want to see a man riding on horse. We want to see a man coming down on clouds. <laughs> right? The kingdom was internal. It was not visible. So no one could see it in terms of perceiving it except by having an understanding of it. Right? Look at John chapter 3 verse 3. Okay. Jesus was helping was helping uh, Nicodemus to get the get this to get this understanding. Jesus answered Nicodemus, he says, Truly, truly I say unto you, unless one is born again. Okay. Some literal translations would, would put that as born from above. That's literally born from above. He cannot see. Notice. Did Jesus mean observe? The kingdom? No, he didn't mean observe the kingdom because he clearly just said in Luke that is not an observable kingdom. <laughs> right? So what he means, unless you, one is born again, they cannot perceive the kingdom. Right? They do not pay attention to the kingdom because it is not something that you can naturally see like how you could have seen the kingdom of Jesus. Of, of, of Israel you could have seen the kingdom of Judah you could have seen the temple in Jerusalem right he said no this kingdom is not like that <laughs> it's completely different right it's invisible it's a spiritual reality okay so Nicodemus said to him how can a man be born when he's old now Nicodemus totally missed the point because Jesus was talking about a kingdom Nicodemus went off into a tangent talking about how can you be born when you're old? Can you enter a second time into your mother's womb and be born? He went off into the ridiculous there. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, Jesus answered patiently. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he can't enter the kingdom. Right? There is a change in birth. Right? A change in birth. So once you see, once you perceive that kingdom, 
you will know how to enter it. <laughs> but if you can't perceive the kingdom, you can't enter it. If you are looking for something to come out of the sky, a big, massive cube to land on the earth, well, you will never see that. <laughs> because Christ says the kingdom is not observable. But when you begin to, okay, realize that and you begin to realize, okay, the kingdom is not observable. The kingdom is within me and uh, Christ is within me. The Father is within me. His law is within me. His spirit is within me. And the treasures of heaven are stored up in this earthly vessel. Well, then you begin to realize what the kingdom really is. And once you realize what the kingdom is, you'll, you'll know how to enter into it. <laughs> right? Man, I'm teaching some things there from the master class. Eh? So if you want to know more about that, go and sign up for the master class. Link in, is in the description. Anyway, so the, that, that, that kingdom was not to be a literal kingdom. So the coming of Christ was not to be understood in the terms of a physical bodily coming. Okay? It was a judgment coming. Let's go to John 14, 23. Okay. John 14, 23. He says, Jesus answered him, answered his disciple, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. In other words, there's, what Christ was alluding to here is that there, there were competing teachings, competing ideologies. Okay, one was a, a fleshly ideology and one was the ideology of Christ, which was the truth, right? But Christ's ideology or Christ's teaching was so new to the, to the disciples and to the, to, the, to the Hebrew people that Christ had to admonish them that they need to keep his ideology, keep his teaching, keep the way, keep his understanding of things. Because if they did not, then they would revert to the physical way of looking at things. To look for a physical kingdom, to look for a physical priest, an earthly priesthood, look for an earthly kingdom, look for an earthly city, look for an earthly temple. Right? But Christ was presenting his word, which was speaking about a spiritual city, a spiritual priesthood, a spiritual temple. Right? A spiritual kingdom. And he says, keep that word. <laughs> right? He says, if you keep my word, my father will love him. And we, that's the father and the son. That's the glory cloud. <laughs> which came in the ancient time to Moses' tabernacle. And then Solomon's temple. Right? So that glory cloud now will come to the believer. It says we will come to him and we will make our home. We will dwell like how God dwelled in the tabernacle of Moses. Like how God dwelled in the temple of Solomon. Then God would dwell in the believer. <laughs> that was the coming. That was the cloud coming that Christ was referring to. Right? So it's only when we keep Jesus' words, meaning we understand the thing in the way Jesus understood it, then we can really see. <laughs> meaning we can have the understanding of the thing. Let's look at Romans 15 verse 20. It says there, Paul speaking, or Paul writing, and thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build upon someone else's foundation. So here Paul was saying, listen, when you see I go out to preach the gospel, I'm not going to where the gospel has already been preached. Okay? I'm going to where they haven't heard the gospel yet. Okay? That's basically what he's saying here. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Romans 15 verse 20. 
Paul is saying, those, he's, he's going to preach to those who have never heard of Christ so that they will see. Meaning, those who, are, who did not hear of Christ, they are blind. And once he tells them about Christ, then they see. Okay? So here's Paul using the, the term see in the sense of understanding the gospel. Understanding the truth of the gospel. Right? He says, and those who have never heard will understand. Okay? Perceiving and understanding. Verse 2, he says, this is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come. So, okay, well, we went past what we need to read. We needed to stop here at verse 21, okay? The point I'm making there is that seeing, the apostolic understanding of seeing was that people were made to see through the preaching of the gospel. And the book of Revelation also, the name revelation means the revealing of, the meaning of things which were formerly hidden were now being made known through teaching, right? Then the book of Revelation was also a means by which people would see with understanding all right so when revelation 1 says every eye shall see or would see you can also understand that in the sense that the events surrounding christ cloud coming would happen in their lifetime they would witness the judgments they would witness the rewards for it was happening in their lifetime in other words, they saw it happening. It happened in their lifetime. However, only the wise, those who keep Jesus' words, or those who kept the understanding of things that Jesus' words gave them, the teachings of Christ and what the revelation revealed, they would see, they would truly see in terms of they would understand. I hope you, you're picking up what I'm putting down here. Let's look at Daniel chapter 12, verse 9. You know. You see, I'm, I'm trying to explain uh, spiritual concepts and we are accustomed to processing things in the, in the natural. <laughs> All right? So there's always that kind of tension between explaining something in the spiritual, okay? So if you, do, if you didn't get what I said, if, if what I'm saying come, is coming across to you as uh, garbled or you're not understanding, take some time to replay the video. Go through the text that I, am, I, I, I have presented and not just those, read the verses before and read the verses after until you, you, you begin to get it, till the Holy Spirit begins to open your understanding. Daniel chapter 12, verse 9, it says there, He said, the angel said to, to Daniel, Go your way, Daniel, for the words, that's the words of Daniel's vision, are shut up and sealed until the time of the end. The time of the end was the time when John was living. John was living in the time of the end. He was living in the time of the end of Israel and Israel's covenant. <laughs> right? That was the time of the end. He was living in the time of the end of the Mosaic covenant or the Sinai covenant. Good? So when the time of the end came, Daniel's vision was unsealed. Daniel's vision became relevant. Okay, then it was then people, uh, uh, the apostles began to see because Daniel's vision was going to help them to understand the events that would happen. And then the revelation came now as a way to further 
amplify the light that Daniel was giving. So you'd find a lot of things in the book of Revelation are pulling from the book of Daniel, like the, like the beast in Revelation 13, for example, are pulling directly from the book of Daniel. <laughs> right? So, Daniel 12, verse 9. These things are sealed until the time of the end. So at the time of the end, they will become relevant. They will be unsealed, right? Now look at verse 10. Many shall pur purify themselves and make themselves white and be refined. That's at the time of the end in John's time. But the wicked shall act wickedly. So you have those who are purified and those who are wicked. Okay? And none of the wicked shall what? Understand. But those who are wise shall understand. Right? So here we have the principle of seeing now. Okay? The wicked are going to see, but they are gonna only going to see the natural thing. They are going to see the, 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 the Jerusalem being destroyed. They're going to see the temple being destroyed. They're going to see themselves being destroyed. But they would not understand why. <laughs> the wise are the ones who are going to see these things and they're going to understand. Right? So while every eye of Israel in the time of John saw only the wise understood all right so in that generation they saw the destruction of the temple as i said they saw jerusalem destroyed as i said in the sense that they were witnesses whether by sight or by hearing they saw or by report they saw they were witnesses of those events because they happened in their lifetime. They saw what Christ and the apostles had been speaking about, had been warning about. But except they had kept the word or the interpretive uh, lens of Christ, they couldn't understand. Only those who were viewing this thing through the lens of Christ, the words of Christ, they understood. Right? And so, <laughs> in our 21st century time, we are not looking for, the, for Christ coming with the clouds of heaven. He already did that. And it is because he came with the clouds of heaven that the new heaven and earth, the, as I call the new cosmos, was established. The way into the presence of the Father was opened. <laughs> the priesthood of Christ was given to all believers. That's the new cosmos in which we live today, which our master class is teaching about. Right? So we can read the words of Christ and the apostles today. And as we read those words, as we read the revelation with the lens, looking at it through the lens of Christ, looking at the teachings of the apostles, looking at the teachings of Christ through the lens of Christ, then we can see <laughs> what the coming of Christ in, on, and with the clouds, we can see what that was all about. And we can see that it was an event that was manifested in the time of the apostles. It was an event that has had a ripple effect throughout the succeeding centuries until our time and beyond. And we can see that it was at that time the kingdom of heaven was established. The new Jerusalem came down in, in the sense it was made accessible to mankind. The old heaven and earth is the old system and the old relationship and the old covenant that fully passed away. And the new heaven and the earth, which is the new relationship, the new covenant relationship, the new cosmos, that was fully ushered in. And every eye who reads those words with the lens of Christ shall see it as well. So everyone who is hearing my voice on this video cast 
shall see Christ. <laughs> Once you are looking or hearing my words through the lens of Christ or through the hearing of Christ. Yes, you will have the understanding if you keep Christ's word, if you keep his method of interpretation. 